Go right. on, go I on. thought I think what we should do is re- let's rewind to earlier on because I actually do want to have the Gen G discussions, Abertine, because someone coming from a coaching background, this is a team where I feel like, unfortunately, you're just not going to get it if you're just a really casual fan who just only plays solo queue and doesn't understand pro player. Like some of the setups that they would have in the LCK were fucking genius, mate. Like the way they would just, they would actually, for, for real, you, the joke is that team should be like LS's favorite team of all time. Like you're saying, it's all like scaling, play on like three lanes, like build massive minion wings. Like it's it's really what he always tries to preach, which if people don't know, because this has been misstated so many times, LS doesn't preach like just be a robot and then just win the game. No, no, he does the opposite. What he tries to tell you, because he comes from a coaching background of like solo queue, is like here's a way you could win without even having out use hands and outplay them. Like here's how you can sort of make a decision that in a minute from now gives you an edge, but it doesn't look like you did anything. And to the opponent, if he doesn't know what you're doing on the map, he's not gonna know what you're doing. So I actually thought like it was brilliant. It's why I actually thought, fuck, if they go to the final, imagine them versus JDG. That would be the shit, right? What a style clash. But I will say, it reminds me a bit of what you said about T1's Aberdeen. The problem with that style, though, is you are also sort of walking a tightrope as well. Like, I think the hardest thing about that style, and this is what I've always told LS, I don't say, like, you have to remember this humans because, I mean, like, people can make mistakes. I mean, the problem is, it's like you're talking about the players there. People might think he's been a bit reductive. He's talking like an ADC is a solo queue player. It's like, bro, essentially a pro ADC sort of is a solo queue player with way better mechanics. Like, unless you've talked to him how do you know if he's brilliant about the game how do you know if he understands when to go mid and when to group maybe someone tells him to do that so what I would say is to do the style Gen G has it does feel like it's going counter to a lot of solo queue instincts like there's certain times you don't want to take a fight there's certain times you've got to understand we're going to build up the minion there's certain drafts you're going to have to do that are going to make it work I feel like if you if you get drawn away from that and you get going into normal team fight League of Legends it, just, it disappears like all your strength because I also thought what was genius about team was if you have a player like I think I think Chovy actually might just be the best laner like I've ever seen. I don't, I don't think he's even close, but he's unbelievable. That style is perfect for him. It's fucking amazing. It's like it's like they've taken all of his strengths and he just maximized them all. What did you think about this? The classic Gen G style? Like as I say, unfortunately, didn't really show up that much at Worlds. I think the the the, the Gen G style is is actually very interesting this year in comparison to last year because they've had way less scaling from the bot side. So they, they would play I would say they, they would play a more normal way of playing League of Legends because I think the Last year, Genji was way, way more about, oh, we're going to just take you to Genji O'Clock and then you are not going to be able <laughs> yes. to win because we just have better players. This year, they were more, I would say, uh, oh, we're going to we're gonna try to crack the game open. Know that at some point, they're going to be a Chovy O'Clock as well within the game. But it was less of a complete team, you know, uh, scaling. It was just, there was me that was just getting like more CS than anyone else on the map while you were... Your your house was already on the fire from both sides. Um, I I think their playstyle was very very interesting. Uh, the, the the thing that's very hard for me to to point my finger uh, at for Genji is their um, how do you say that? I think that it is League of Legends is all about the the moment you're strong, right? This is something I learned back in the days from day nine. So I'm taking something that probably very few Come people on. know. And it, they, from the day nine dailies, right? It's oh, like strategy I knew it was coming. I knew it yeah, was man, coming. it's it's interesting uh, because I I learned, you know, I was I was uh, twenty years old. I was looking at a, like a former pro StarCraft player, telling about what is strategy. Sure. And it's like this is not about getting this unit. It's about uh, getting this unit at this time. And it kind of cracked, you know, something expanded in my head. I was like, oh, this is strategy. It's to come at the most, like the strongest time with this amount of resources. I think T1 does it the best. They come and they're like, oh, we're stronger level one. And from level one, you're never going to see anything. You're never going to see the map. It's over. The thing for Genji is they're like, shoot first. This is their play style. They're like, shoot first. If you can't land the shots, we win 100% of the time. And they've done that countless times against T1, countless times in the LCK. They are the best, but they give one shot to the opponent. And I think BLG, first, as you say, the Thorin, like they didn't play as well as they did in the LCK at Worlds. But I think against Chinese team, this is the worst thing you can ever do. And I think that's that's a kind of like where it's very hard to like kind of get a very good idea of GNG at these Worlds and generally against Chinese teams is can you allow Chinese team to shoot first and then come back in the game. The facts show that not, but I think like we don't have enough like uh, sample to completely judge about it. But I think that's that's kind of like what differs between T1 and Genji as a Korean versus Chinese team is T1 has taken the responsibility of 
coming with less units, if I speak in StarCraft way, less units but sooner, whereas Genji wanted to get more units later, but they never had the chance to play their game. And that's what kind of puzzles me, is how uh, is Korea going to find a second team that wants to play slower than T1 and still compete with Chinese team, which seem to be just better if you let them uh, play by their win condition in the first 15 minutes of the game. Sorry about the monologue. It's all good. No, it's good. It's okay. This is so, a very complete so, point. Go on. No, so yeah. here's the thing. I actually think, so I am I was on the what the fuck happened to Gen G at MSI train because I thought that was a complete like breakdown. Like people talk about Chovy choking. I actually think Chovy was like, that's the worst I've ever seen Chovy play at MSI 2023. Outside like the Rumble games against like T1, which was just some hero shit. Once he got into that lower bracket, like Chovy lost his mind. It was a horror show uh, outside learning he's still just a very good learner i think at worlds gen g basically played uh, game one and game two they were like they were like two of the worst drafts i've ever seen like in any given like context of a series and the, the fact that they went back to back after losing the first game they were like we're going to pick azir again and Jane, that one blew my brain but I will give full kudos. I actually think game three, four, and five, Genji like played their style, executed on it very, very like well, and then in game five, at the like just some critical mistakes happened, and they ended up losing. But those like three games against like BOG at the end of the series, I actually think like Genji did actually find themselves and were playing like the LCK version of uh, Genji. And yeah, the end result isn't what they wanted. But, like, I was actually, like, first of all, I was surprised. That, like, I thought with the way the games one and two went, there was no way Gen.G. I thought it was going to be another MSI run back where they just, like, keep on putting themselves in a hole and playing it out. But they they, they moved away from it. I just think that BLG is, like, a horrible matchup because when I watched, like, Gen.G. in summer, they became more and more and more reliant on, like, Doran being a dominant, like, player. Doran actually, like really came up in terms of his own individual level, where he was able to outperform individually, like, Kane and uh, Zeus. Well, I think Zeus was probably slumping a little bit, but he did outperform, like, both of them. And the Genji, in particular, Peanut, was using this new winning lane, like, very amb- advantageously. And then they went to Worlds, and Bim was just Doran's dad for, like, five games, and, it was a- and Jun was just living inside Peanut's jungle. And it's, it's one of those weird things, because I think what it is, the way, like, the game's going to go, it's going to be really interesting to see the new, like, Gen G, because I'm not, like, I'm not sure, like, how much of, like, Peanut, like, contributes to, like, Gen G style, but to me, the worst games at Worlds are always when Peanut's, Peanut, sorry, is, like, really, really, really pressured, and the game seems to just fall apart for Gen G. And they then, like, draft, you know what I mean? They always draft in a way in which Peanut is going to get pressured. You know what I mean? Like, they pick the Akali, who, like, Chovy's going to <clears throat> CS under terror better than any Akali that's ever existed in solo queue, but he can't move to help Peanut get invaded in jungle. That's, like, the downside of the pick. So it doesn't matter, like, if Chovy, like, gets every single last hit, Peanut end- ends up in a gold deficit, or the team ends up in a gold deficit, just generally because of the pick. So I was re- I was just really 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 surprised for them the, that they themselves like don't see that. I think they they could have walked away from the BLG series with a win, and I would have liked to have seen them gone further further. But it's just kind of not the way it worked out. Like, so they made key mistakes in game five. I don't think it was like an actual choke because they, he actually had like gold leads. He was executing pretty well. It wasn't like he he made like massive critical error. It was like a TP to the tower at the wrong time. And then he got like ran down. I don't think it this world was like a classic like Chovy choke angle. Uh, but generally, I was more impressed with this Gen G team at Worlds than I have been with Chovy teams, um, like in like later years. It's just the result wasn't there in the end, and that can sometimes happen in a series. You can play like an amazing series and just not end up not winning it. Just look at all the teams that JDG beat this year. Like, those of those teams all thought they were going to win. They looked destined to win, and then, like, they lose to JDG, and all of a sudden, JDG are the LPL summer winners and stuff like that. So, they were a bit of victims of circumstances of fate, but I was actually kind of impressed with them at Worlds, to be honest. It just kind of took them took them too long to get into the series, the, the rhythm of the series. 
to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.